What's going on guys? Welcome to the channel. Today, today I want to be kind of laid back. Today I want to go over with you guys how a CP3 works and why we have them. Uh, kind of a abstract idea, but as you guys watched my videos, if you have, a while back we put a 10 millimeter stroker CP3 on that truck, on my truck, and um, I didn't feel like I gave you guys enough information. I personally am a big fan of information and well I just didn't feel like I gave it to you so today I've been working on this guy right here trying to get it out of my driveway I'm sick and tired of looking at it I just need to get it out of here it doesn't, it doesn't take much uh, it's not gonna take much I just need to do it so I'm out here doing it waiting for the battery to charge I'm kind of cleaning up a little bit not you know you might not even might not even notice but I'm trying to clean up a little bit and I keep staring at this pump okay I keep staring at that pump because a little while ago we put a 10 millimeter stroker CP3 on the truck and it helped out a lot. But beside that, maybe you guys don't know how a CP3 works or why we have them. Um, I am a mechanic by trade. That's what I do. Uh, I will never say I'm a professional. Uh, I give it my best and I know a few things, but I don't know everything. So when it comes to information and watching videos like this, I, I just love the information. So this guy right here. So what we have here is an old rusty crusty stock Bosch CP3. They started putting the CP3 on the Cummins motors, the 5.9s when they went the common rail, that was back in 2003. They ran a CP3 pump from 2003 all the way up to 2018. And why they did that was they had to they had to meet emissions. And the best way they could meet emissions was to get away from a VP44, which was kind of a wasteful pump. Kind of primitive. A lot of people still love the VP pumps. I haven't played with one. I've only played with this thing. It's a, you know, wire fire truck. Common rail. So they went with the, the CP3 to, in, to meet emissions. What they did was they increased rail pressure. Now rail pressure, what is rail pressure? So instead of a VP44, which was an injection pump, the VP44 controlled the injection timing and all that stuff of the, of the uh, injectors. A CP3 pump only supplies rail pressure. This is not as smart as a VP44. This just has one job and that is to build rail pressure. And they up the rail pressure. I can't remember what the actual VP pressures were, but the rail pressures in the 5.9, they, they took them up to about 23, 24,000. Um, mine uh, will hold 26,000. And I think that's pretty standard for a CP3 setup, for a common rail setup. So what this pump is, is it's a three piston radial pressure pump. If you can imagine, if you see these Allen or uh, they're actually torques, but these there's two here, two here, and two here. Behind those is basically the piston. Now, as this thing goes around, this input shaft, which is built like a crankshaft, controls those pistons. It it cycles the pistons. If you can imagine, like your engine, you know, you have a crankshaft connecting rods and pistons. It's the same same way. But what this is doing is it's just it's just pumping out rail pressure, just pumping out fuel pressure. Uh, one fun thing about them, let's see, you have an FCA, fuel control actuator right here. That controls basically how much pressure is going to the rail, if I'm not mistaken. That guy right there is crucial. You, you do not want to unplug this and run that truck. So if you unplug this FCA, it goes full stroke. Um, I mean, you're going to get 25, 26,000 pounds at idle, and that is not good for your injector. So the only reason to unplug this and run the truck is to test it, and the only test it with a uh, you know, short amount of time, just, just be careful. You don't want to blow the ass out of your injectors, and unplugging that guy will do it. So that's the FCA, fuel control actuator. So the fun part about these two is there's a, let's say... Let's call it a secondary pump. Actually, might even want to call it a primary pump. Behind this right here, this guy, this is actually a gear pump. 
this is what GM relies on for the feed, which nothing against you Chevy guys or the design that works fine. But what you're doing with this on a GM, and guys, please correct me if I'm wrong down below, but what you're doing with this is you're relying on this to both suck fuel and feed the CP3. On a Dodge, we have lift pumps in our tanks. Factory lift pump will supply 11 pounds of pressure um, to the feed. So 11 pounds of pressure to the inlet, which is right here. I don't have a fitting in there right now because I put the fitting, the air dog fitting on my new pump. But the main feed goes in here and there's some passages and witchcraft and whatnot going on in there. And it ends up in this gear pump as a, uh, it's almost like its own, so it's almost like its own supply pump. This pump supplies pressure, to, you know, gear driven pump. It supplies pressure to the main pistons which make your main pressure, your big pressure. So once the fuel goes in your input, or into your inlet, and through some witchcraft, it gets to this gear pump, which supplies the main radial piston, they're the radial pump section, the FCA is gonna control the output. The fuel control actuator controls the output pressure to the rail. Uh, it basically controls how hard this pump works. So right here you have your rail supply. And this is where I screwed up my last video too if you guys watched it and caught it. I kept calling this a rail return or a return in general. This is not. This is your, your rail supply. This right here is a return port. When you change these, obviously you're gonna, you're gonna pop the gear off. It's a tapered, this is tapered. The gear is pressed on there with the nut. You're gonna wanna pop that off and you're gonna want a puller. I think I showed you guys in the last video about that puller. But you're only gonna disconnect three things to get this off. You're gonna disconnect the connection to your FCA, your rail feed, actually four things. Your inlet, which I keep forgetting about because the fitting's not on it, and this is a return as well. So guys, that's basically my explanation of a CP3 pump and how it works. They're, they're simple and they're complicated at the same time. So the real question is why did I change this CP3 for a 10 millimeter stroker CP3 when I have stock injectors? So what I was starting to see with my my rail pressure, I was starting to see it hang down around, oh, I think it was hanging down around 22, 23,000. It just wasn't, I didn't feel like it was building right. So one of two things, either this CP3 is getting weak because it's got 280,000 miles on it, even though it's a 500,000 mile pump. This pump's either getting weak or I'm just getting to the point and stock injectors, I don't know how I could, but I'm getting to the point where this guy right here cannot keep up with the demands of the tuning and the injectors. That's why I went with a 10 millimeter pump rather than swapping a factory pump into it, you know, just replacing it. It's really up to you guys what you do. If you're, if you're one of those guys that's gonna chase a number, um, I want to see I want to see 750 or 800 out of this truck in the long run and I want to bring you guys along for that but I'm chasing a number and with a stock CP3 you're gonna support injector wise you're gonna support uh, 20 maybe 35 percent injectors and that's and a, on a healthy CP3 that's a lot of stress this guy's really gonna work hard to feed those injectors. Well, in order for me to get my number, I need more fuel than that. Uh, we're gonna need a different air setup too, but that's a story for a different day. So our 10 millimeter CP3, we can safely run 85% injectors on that. And I might be able to stress it out hard on some 100% injectors, but we'll see. That's gonna come once, uh, after we decide what we're gonna actually do for air. I have a few ideas, but it's a, it's a long ways away. We got a lot of work to do to that truck before we start thinking about that. So when the opportunity came to change a pump, 
that's why I went with a 10 millimeter pump instead of a factory replacement pump. As I am, I'm in the long run, I'm chasing a number. Um, if you guys aren't, it's it might not be worth it for you. And they make bigger ones too if you're if you're going above and beyond that. That's all between you and what you want to do with your truck. So guys, that's basically all I wanted to do today was go over that pump with you guys and kind of give you my two cents on the what, why, and how of that pump on these engines. Uh, we got a lot of things. We got, this guy came in the mail. We got our ISPRO uh, fuel pressure supply gauge. Waiting on a few more pieces to show up so I can put that on. This toolbox you've seen in the background. I got a bunch of stuff on it so I can't open it up right now for you. But I'm actually mounting my air compressor and air tank uh, to get my air system, onboard air back on the truck. So there's just a lot going on in the future with this truck, and it's not going to stop. I got a lot of big things coming, which I'm excited for, and also kind of not ready for, but we're going to get it done anyways. So guys, I said in the beginning of the video, I like information, and if there's anything you guys want to know, um, I'd be more than happy to do the research into it. And there's a lot of things I take for granted because I deal with this stuff every day. If you guys, you know, easy as as how diesel works or why why they work, um, just hit me in the comment section below with some topics of what you guys want to know about these engines. If you want to know how a diesel works, even the diesel engine itself, you know, if that's something you don't quite understand or how they work without spark plugs, if you're used to a gas motor like this thing's got, just don't be afraid to. Put it out there. Don't be afraid to ask about a certain topic. So I'm going to leave you guys there. I'm going to go back to cleaning up a little bit and getting this car working so I can get it out of my driveway. Um, I want to thank you guys for watching, and we will see you on the next one.